Hello, I'm Javed Sheikh. I have with me my colleagues, Dr. Turaya Resi, Dr. Robert Krohn, and we'll be talking today about our newly established platform on innovations in health professional education. The platform consists of an open access journal, as well as videos and podcasts and blogs. And the purpose is to create a broad global community of health professional educators who can dialogue, who can debate, who can discuss, various innovations in health professional education. We all agree that we need to have very good health professional education to establish capacity and improve healthcare systems. Let me come to you, Bob, because you are very experienced in global medical education overall and working in different parts of the world. I mean, just describe to us where does the overall context come in, in at this time in terms of us establishing a platform like this? Well, I think there are a number of things that are coming together. Um, certainly, no matter where we go in the world, we, we hear that there is a projected workforce shortage. So there is a real need to continue to develop healthcare professionals at all levels. Uh, since we are aging, we are growing in terms of numbers, and therefore there are many more of us that need care. Secondly, I think there's been an emphasis recently on interprofessional team-based medicine. This is in part to deal with the workforce shortage, but I think it's also um, uh, the, the concept or the realization that we work in teams as we provide care, and we should probably learn in teams. And so finding ways in which we can do that and do that well, I think, is important. I think thirdly, there has been an explosion in technology, both in education in general, but in health education in particular. And so I think we need to find ways in which we can incorporate new technologies and new approaches from a pedagogical as well as philosophical perspective on how we in fact educate folks. So I think there are a number of things which are coming together, which I think uh, really provides the rationale for creating a new platform uh, to create that community that you described. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So several converging trends all coming together at this time. Good. Well, Toraya, coming to you as a medical educator, I mean, you know the field and you know where the gaps are, and Bob described, you know, all these trends which necessitate we create a platform like this to bring in other health professionals. Tell us where you think there are gaps and why it's a good idea to really align this thing as a health professional education. Uh, Well, I want to go back to the point that uh, Bob has mentioned, which is the need for a more number of healthcare professionals uh, worldwide. I mean, of course, uh, we need not only an increase in the number, but also a better distribution of the healthcare workforce worldwide. You know, the quick answer to this, why don't you build more healthcare professional schools? which is of course needed. But I think another piece that we have to challenge ourselves about is how do we uh, develop and deliver new curricula? Uh, I think we're living in a very interesting time. About a a decade ago, we have started moving from a process-based education into a competency-based education. This has challenged us to think about new ways of how we're going to assess our learners. We honestly don't know that uh, quite well. Uh, And also has started to challenge us to think about fixed ideas that we've had about the duration of medical school and the duration of residency training. Does every medical student need to spend the same time in medical school doing the same thing? And can we probably start residency training earlier for certain subspecialties in the hope that we can produce healthcare workforce earlier for specific areas and specific uh, specialties? Uh, so that's been kind of an important area, I think, that we need uh, to, uh, to address as an important challenge. Another uh, focus is the issue of the uh, IT health literacy. Uh, we've, you know, our generation is, uh, you know, digital immigrants, the new generation is called digital natives, but I think there's still a need to educate both of those generations in the use of the uh, IT technology as it's booming, and it will be important to incorporate in our new curricula, and will, it will help actually uh, democratize, if you want, health education worldwide. And another challenge is, um, 
in terms of educating our faculty who are teaching this new generation. We need to find effective, efficient, uh, cost-effective in particular, faculty development programs that can be used worldwide, that can help our educators move uh, and apply those new principles in medical education. And I'm really hoping that the new platform that we have uh, will uh, you know, provide the new ideas that can be shared, shared worldwide to help in the, uh, you know, this, you know, our evolving uh, understanding of what's happening in, in, in healthcare and how can we treat patients better, uh, but also in you know, uh, sharing the resources worldwide and how can we educate health professionals better. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Just listening to you, I actually get excited. There are several innovations on the way here. So the future looks very bright and looks like we're going to be very busy with innovations. Talking about innovations, you know, in terms of our own experience here at Wild Cornell over the last several years, we had to come up with several programmatic innovations. We transplanted the medical school from U.S., but what we found was that the K-12 education was different. We had to come up with a six-year integrated program, so we had to focus on math and science skills of the students here, which we did during summer, winter. So several programmatic uh, innovations, and the end result of that was that we created graduates who match at the best U.S. medical schools for the residency training, so that can be done. Well, good. Well, talking about, uh, again, innovations and the larger context, I'm going to come back to you, Bob, again. I mean, you described very nicely uh, why the need for a platform like this. Just say more, uh, you know, in terms of your own experience. Uh, Trey was talking about inequity in different parts of the world and why uh, having health professional education is important at this time. Just talk a little bit about building health systems and strengthening them, producing capacity, some of that. How would this platform help? Sure. I think uh, no matter where we come from, uh, we are all looking for ways to do things better, faster, and cheaper. Uh, and that can be in the United States where we are looking for ways to truncate the, the duration of, uh, of uh, education and training, as Thraya just mentioned. It can also mean in much more resource-constrained communities where, uh, where we really have very limited resources, the need to create programs and platforms that, uh, that are applicable uh, and can be transferred from those areas where they have been developed to more resource-constrained communities. <clears throat> so I think that one of the, the advantages to the platform is that it actually is a leveling um, agent in the sense that things that can be developed in one part of the world can be transmitted to another part of the world quite quickly. Uh, we, we all are aware of the globalization phenomenon that's going. Uh, frankly, diseases have always crossed uh, uh, boundaries, but increasingly healthcare practitioners, patients, uh, technology are rapidly moving across boundaries regarding, regardless of what the uh, uh, level of resources might be available in that particular community. So I think that the advantage of the, of the platform is that really for no cost, literally no cost, uh, practitioners, uh, educators, uh, students can access this resource, learn what is the most recent uh, uh, development in any area that, uh, that we have touched upon, and actually learn from that and potentially implement that in their own community. I think that's its strength. Great, great, Bob. So you're talking about really a real democratization of health professions education right. to overcome inequities of health care. Toria, just talking about this and uh, looking at maybe even broadly in uh, the area of uh, general education, uh, I was recently looking at the report you know, from Economic Forum talking about uh, multiple converging trends and actually transformation of education in itself. To say more, do you think health professions, educators can learn, glean something from uh, the broad uh, trends in education in terms of changes? Uh, yeah, thank you for asking that question. It's interesting that health educators uh, have been particularly uh, those who are not, uh, you know, in, in primarily in education, have been working in silos and have not uh, been interacting with those who are also doing education at the, you know, f at the school level. 
so looking at the global trends and you know looking at the uh, reports from the Global Economic Forum, for example, it's interesting that you see that they're talking about the same competency. Probably, I mean, they're calling them different things, but if you look at you know what they're trying to achieve, it's very similar to what mm -hmm. we are trying to achieve. So engaging the, the communities of the, you know, those teachers who are teaching in schools with the teachers who are, learn, who are teaching in the health uh, care uh, professional schools, I think would be, would be quite interesting so that we can learn from each other and kind of align uh, our thoughts uh, for those who are interested. And again, I think really this is a great opportunity for those who are interested to submit such ideas to our journal. Uh, uh, you know, whether it's in a paper format, uh, you know, video, uh, even resources that maybe those in schools are using but we are not uh, using that would help, help improve the education of the healthcare professionals that we are dealing with. Thank you. Thank you, Terea. In fact, I'm glad you mentioned that some of these resources will be available to everyone. I mean, it's not only the print and digital and social media, but we want to make sure that we will provide consultations and opportunities for collaborations to anyone who wants to come and make use of this opportunity. Any uh, final thoughts, Bob, from your side? Uh, well, we've talked a lot about globalization, but I also think that it's very important, to, as, as you pointed out in, in some of the, your comments, about localization. That is, you know, we all survive within a local cultural context. And so even though principles may be uh, generalized across the world, there still need to be aspects of what we do which are unique to our own communities and cultures. And so I think it would be important that we be in a position to respect those local uh, aspects of, of culture, which I know is very important to Thorea, and uh, we've discussed this in many uh, fora in the past. Um, and I think that the, um, the value of our platform is that some things that may not come across in print that might come across in a short video or some other venue or some other modality may in fact give us the opportunity to not only talk about the broad principles but also to localize that to our own communities since I think everyone needs to be cognizant of application uh, such that it is acceptable to its own uh, to the people of that particular region and community. Great, Bob. Thank you. Very good points. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Treya. Thank, Thank you all for joining us. You can see we are very excited about this platform and hopefully when you get a chance to use some of our resources, you'll be excited too. Thank you.